But I'm going to ask of each of you, what's the most outrageous design, perhaps in volume, that you've been responsible for? Eve? So outrageous or yeah. quantity? So outrageous, I don't know if it's outrageous, but I, I designed a New York City condom, which is distributed for free. Um, uh, 39 million of them get, get distributed every year. Um, now, what and, sets apart this condom? <laughs> well, let me just say, bef before, before our design, it was in a sort of pink you know, envelope of sorts, um, and it said lifestyle on it or something like that. Um, and they were distributing 9 million for prevention, AIDS, and, mm. and uh, teen pregnancy prevention. And then once we launched, they, they, they were distributing, they're distributing now 39 to 40 uh, a year. 40 million so, a year. So um, that was just changing the packaging, making ni nicer dispensers. How, so how did you improve this design? Um, not the condom itself, no. <laughs> <laughs> just the packaging. <laughs> If, you know, but New York New Yorkers thought they needed you know a special version. Um, I'll do let you imagine what they they thought they needed. Do you have one? Not on me, no. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, your most successful design? Well, probably my most successful design would be uh, the the flip uh, and flipboard, yeah. uh, and it wasn't really just me. It was the whole team, but uh, it was kind of an accidental thing where. We wanted to create, uh, first of all, the notion of pagination for content, yeah. uh, similar to a magazine, but we didn't want something that was too, uh, too flourishy or too skeuomorphic, as they say in the industry. Uh, and so we wanted a kind of a plastic flip. And uh, we, we thought of the train station with the, those flip, flipping tiles, those flip boards. And, uh, and somebody, one of our engineers, just decided, you know, while we were searching for what the right transition was to mock up this flip. And we tried it, and we just fell in love. And uh, so that was probably our most successful design. And in the very team. first product, is that right? In the very first product, yeah. You, or in, in Flipboard. You have yeah. designers in your company, right? Yes, we have uh, four designers in our company. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but the whole company is you know, inspired by Apple. A lot of people came from Apple. You know, really, the DNA is really about you know, designing great product. And so it's been, from the very beginning, part of the DNA. Right. Dave Morin, uh, your company, Path, has been described as a design-first company, and that you are a designer. Let me ask you the same question. What is your most successful and outrageous design? Outrageous. Uh, probably by, I mean, by volume, it's probably the Facebook Connect button. Yeah. Um, How many times do you think that's been used? That's pretty hard to call. Um, <laughs> probably trillions. Trillions. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, there's another feature, that one's hard to call, and I'm, I'm sort of so far out of it, it's, it's hard to know how, how big it's, it's gotten. But um, in Path, we have a feature called Seen It, which um, is a subtle, but uh, it's a subtle feature that unless it turns off, you don't realize that it's there. Um, and once it turns off, you really, our users start to go really super crazy uh, if it goes away. And it simply just shows you uh, who's seen your photo uh, when you put it, put it on Path. And, We've done hundreds and hundreds of billions of those, um, so many so that we don't even keep track of it anymore because there, uh, there's so many of them. Uh, how how many paths again have been? How many what? Paths have been uh, downloaded. How many? Oh, uh, that's that's pretty hard too. Uh, oh, how many moments have been generated? No, no, no. Users. Oh, users. Uh, almost 18 million. 18 million. Yeah. And Mike, how many users of Flipboard? About 70 million users and about. Um, Probably about 100 million flips so far. 100 million flips, wow. Tony, your most successful or outrageous design. <laughs> well, you know, there were different generations, the iPod or the iPhone, but really the, the thing that was outrageous design um, was the 30-pin connector on the bottom of oh, all those products. Yeah, yeah. Right? Every, Let's hear it every, for the 30-pin connector. Huh? <laughs> it's still causing problems. It's still causing yeah. problems, but in every hotel room, right? Every car, the, we, it was just a runaway success in every which way, yeah. um, connecting all kinds of things together that you never would have connected. Until now it's changed it. Until they, you know, <laughs> yeah. until they Replaced changed it. Replaced by lightning. <laughs> Tell me, what were you thinking when you invented that iPod? What was I thinking? Yeah. <laughs> well, at the time, I was, you know, I was a consultant. And so what I was definitely thinking was, I need to take this consultancy role because I need the money to help my startup <laughs> company. So that's how it got started, right? Because, you know, Apple wasn't the Apple we know of today, right? Apple was really, really hurting back in the day, even with Steve back. It was, you know, it had $150 million in, uh, in, in, in the bank and $500 million in debt. 
And through that, you know, now today, 150 billion in the bank. Most, very, most, very different. Not, not due to me. Most but. valuable company in the world, I think. Yeah. Even most, so. most valuable. So what I was thinking was really just about, you know, sustenance, survival. Most kind of survival <laughs> for my, for my, uh, for my little startup. But after, you know, Steve really, you know, I said, Steve, how are we going to go up against Sto Sony? And he goes, You make it. Trust me, we're going to put every marketing dollar we have behind it. We're going to make this happen. And it, he really, uh, he really did, you know, uh, live up to that. And let's, it was great. It was wonderful. Let's go a little bit further on that. How was it working with Steve on design? I imagine the two of you clashed sometimes. You know, <laughs> there there are two different types of uh, design decisions. Some are fact based, and others are opinion based, right? And so with facts. Usually, over time, if you got the right facts and he believed how you c created the data or, or found out the data, he would go, okay, I understand, we're going to go that way. But then on the opinion-based pieces, you know, what color was it going to be or exactly that shape or exactly that corner, you know, you'd go, oh, it's going to jab in your hand or it's going to patina in this way or it's going to scratch. It's like, you know, you really had to come, I couldn't just, I could have an argue with it, but he always, you know, would always win. We had to come as an army. So it would have to be a bunch of us together, and we'd all go, yes, this is not the right thing. No, no, this is not right. And then we'd get in a room, and then hopefully we'd look all around and go, now. And we'd just, we'd go at him. And then sometimes he would relent, and other times, no, that's the way it's going to be. But it never always, we didn't always win by any means, but... Uh, it was a wonderful experience because he really pushed you in every different dimension, whether it was the UI or a pixel or a color or a shape or what have you. And so it was an incredible learning experience, and I wouldn't change that for the I've, world. I've heard that as an entrepreneur and a CEO who's design inspired that you have uh, embraced, extended, adopt some of many of Steve's traits as a leader. Would you say that's true? <laughs> yes, I'm unrelenting as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, there, there, there's some differences between, you know, uh, between what we do today and what we did at, at Apple at the time. But we have a lot of the same people from the team. So we, the things that we created and how we created it, very, very similar. But, uh, you know, one of, the, one of the big differences, I think, um, between between what we did at Apple and what we do at Nest is, you know, it's really about making sure it's a, a holistic design with the whole team, really feeling like they were the ones mm -hmm. who designed that, mm -hmm. right? You want to make sure you transfer the ownership mm -hmm. and, and the ideas to yeah. the younger guys on the team and feel like they have a real part and a real passion right. around it so that they're incentivized in some way to make sure that that thing exists. And then that was a very, very different dynamic. And then before Apple. they do a review with you, do they all go in the room together and lock arms? And <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> they do some of the same exact techniques where we would we literally would say, OK, there's going to be these three models, these options. We're going to make sure it's perfectly right. And Steve says, just show it to me. No. Steve, no. we're going to do it this way. We're going to do And now my team's doing that The same me. thing back to you. It's doing the same thing to me. And then, you know, it's wonderful because they're creating their own culture. Right. right? It's, a, it's a great thing to see.